Every decision you make in life involves a trade-off. Your choices impact your time and your energy, which are your precious and limited life resources. So when you practice managing clients, you basically practice managing life, because life at the end is the ultimate limited resource. Remote work and freelancing are starting to look more and more appealing. Just because you are great at your craft doesn't mean you know how to run a business. In this video, I'll show you five steps that will teach you how to always win when negotiating with clients. If you're not charging enough, you're losing money. It's as simple as that. I'll show you how to determine your minimum hourly rate easily. But first, something else to consider. Clients will value your services as much as you do. If you charge much lower rates than you should, your clients might question the results you know, that they'll get. Research from October 2023 revealed that single adults in the US pay, on average, $2,500 in basic monthly expenses. This includes mortgage or rent, utilities, food, car payments, and credit card debt. If you are that person and plan to work 40 hours a week, which is 160 hours a month, divide 2,500 by 160 to get roughly $15 per hour. This is the minimum acceptable rate. Working at this rate will cover an average person's basic needs. Some will probably be fine with this, but not you. You want to make more money. And in this video, I'll show you how. First of all, you need to know your worth. And what do I mean by that? Websites like Glassdoor, Payscale, or freelance forums can help your research. They show the standard rates in your industry for similar work and experience levels. I'll tell you later how to ask for above average rates. A client wants to pay $50 for a video like this, but let me share a secret. You can't get a video like this for 50 bucks. So it's useless to go with an hourly rate of $25 because you can't edit this video in two hours. Do you get the point? Try to understand the client's budget before the negotiation. Don't guess, ask the client openly what their budget is. If you can do all of this, then you can raise your rates above the average asking price. Explain to the client why you are worth the rates you are asking for. Highlight your experience and your portfolio. Explain the unique value you bring. Say how you can solve the client's problems. And I'll also explain when and how to raise your prices, so stick with me. Don't forget that the goal of negotiation is not just to get funds. It is also to build a positive, long-term relationship. This is the biggest negotiation mistake you will ever make. And you will make this mistake a lot, trust me. I worked as a top-rated freelancer for years, I had clients worldwide, and I still made this mistake. In an attempt to attract clients, we give them a discount. I'll explain now why this is wrong. Everything around you is getting more expensive, but you are stuck in a loop with a client who throws even more work at you, but at a lower price. Do you get the paradox? Instead of earning more money with more work, you're earning less. How come? The client pays less than they typically would, and they like that, of course. That's why they keep you on a short leash with constant work. You will become frustrated and burnt out. But you can't ask for a price increase and keep this client. It simply won't work. The only way to get out of this is to stop working for this client. Think hard when and if you are ready to give a discount because it can be very costly. In the next chapter, I will explain one of the most important skills during negotiation. You can't expect to negotiate effectively if you can't show value. By showing a comprehensive portfolio, you have every right to ask for a higher price. Clients who understand what sets you apart from your competitors will accept the rates you set. Let them feel like they are winning. And here is how. Don't be afraid of starting high because sometimes clients will try to negotiate for a lower price. If you're aiming for $70 per hour, start at 80. If the client accepts that higher amount, great. If not, you'll be able to negotiate the amount you need. When you get used to this, you will receive a fair pay. The clients will like working with someone who is willing to compromise. They will feel like they are winning every single time and they should. I know you're wondering when to raise prices. I'll explain how I do it and it works every single time. From my experience, the best way to raise your prices is with every new client and new items in your portfolio. And yes, you heard me right. Raise your prices gradually by 5-10% to with each new client and portfolio item you add. And don't go crazy. If you charge $50 per hour, charge your next client $55. But don't do that if you can show value. That is why you need to have something to show in your portfolio. I'm not built like other men. Think of yourself as a general with no army, but there are many more like you. Some also have big armies, right? How can you show your strength? What are the most powerful weapons at your disposal? These weapons and your skills are the value you provide. Here is how to use them to your advantage. To succeed as a freelancer, negotiate like a confident general. 
have confidence in your skills and the value you provide. There is no need to provide discounts or lower your rates if you can show your worth. You need to stand your ground. But sometimes you need to let go. In the next chapter, I will tell you when the general should withdraw. First of all, be aware that involving yourself in long negotiations will make you miss out on other opportunities. There are at least two situations when I immediately withdraw from negotiations. I'll talk about it in a minute, but first, let's talk about what type of clients you need to attract in any way you can. I had the pleasure of working with singer Reed Aura, who is a global superstar. My agency Brydog built a new website for her and the negotiations with her team went super smoothly, so we started with a small discount and it was well worth it. Here is a video where I explain how I got Rida to be my client. So celebrity or high value clients will help you boost your portfolio and it's okay to give a discount and you should take it up a gear because a good testimonial from a client like that is worth a lot. Here is what Rita said about working with my agency. Hi, it's me Rita Ora and I'm so excited to share that I've been working with Bright Doc on my new website. Everyone was so helpful and I'm so proud of my new website. Go and check it out on RitaAura.com. But it's not always easy like that. If a client does not agree to a minimum rate or terms, be ready to walk away. It's important to value your work and your time. Here are my top two reasons why you shouldn't proceed with negotiations. The client says that they should not pay a certain amount for your services because there is a cheaper proposal. The client that tries to dismiss your proposal like that is not worth your time, period. Example number two, the client attempts to convince you that you will never find clients who are willing to pay the rates you have set for yourself. You can always find better paying clients, so stand your ground and move on from those clients. I have my own tactics for dealing with bad clients. I've made a whole video about it, but more on that later. This is an ever-growing dilemma in the world of freelancing. It's not easy for newcomers to decide on this one, so here are my five cents. If the scope of work is not clearly defined or is expected to change, I would always charge by the hour. For example, if the client has 10 revisions of a video you are editing because they are not sure how they want it to look like, charging by the hour will keep you covered. Here you can see the pros and cons of hourly rates as well as those of project-based pricing. In short, I believe that charging by the hour helps you to compensate for all your time, but it has limited earning potential because there are a limited number of hours you can work. Project-based pricing, on the other hand, has its advantages. Some of those are predictable income and the potential for higher earnings, but it also has downsides like fixed income limits and pressure to deliver. If you use a website template and have all the assets and client instructions, you can estimate how much time you need to finish. In that case, it's best to charge per project. Project-based pricing allows you to charge for the value you provide rather than the time it takes. It also allows you to potentially earn more as you become faster and more skilled. Offering different pricing packages to clients is key. It's mandatory that the options work with their needs and their budgets. This will make the packages much more appealing. And some clients are not created equal. Some are just bad. Watch this video to learn how to deal with bad clients. And if you're new to freelancer.com, here is my video that will help you make a head start. I'll see you next time.